welcome to the build log number 12 video. In this video we'll look at the new uh, Z-axis parts on the Hypercube, the new integrated lead screw for the Z-axis stepper motor, and also some silver PETG filament from Orarum. Starting with the Z-axis, you can clearly see the Z-axis motor is now mounted to the bottom of the frame. If we scroll up, the motor is no longer mounted to the top of the frame. So there is a new motor mount for this, which I've already uploaded to Thingiverse. And the same with the uh, Z-axis uh, linear guide rails. This shaft clamp is also updated uh, to allow the shaft of the uh, guide rail and the shaft of the lead screw to be uh, aligned once more. Uh, if I just move over here, you'll see uh, the old or the version 1 uh, motor mount on the left here. So this one used to mount on top of the frame and also into the frame a bit. Where this is the new version 1.1 1 .1, uh, motor mount uh, designed to mount at the base of the frame. And just looking at the Z uh, linear shaft clamps, you can see it's basically the same design. However, I've moved the uh, shaft out a few millimetres just so the shaft lines up now with the shaft of the stepper motor. My new Z-axis motor has finally arrived. As you can see, the lead screw goes right inside the uh, NEMA 17 motor, so no more shaft coupler whatsoever. And also that means if I pan up, there is no uh, bearing at the top to support the lead screw. It no longer needs it because the lead screw is integrated into the motor. The length of the lead screw embedded within the motor is about 265 millimeters. Now there's a bit of a story with this particular motor. Uh, purchased from Banggood, they didn't ship it in a box, they shipped it just wrapped in foam. So the actual shaft was bent by the time I received it. So I accepted a partial refund. Um, in, in return I was able to keep this particular motor and I simply switched out the lead screw from the bent one that was inside to this one here, which is the 300 millimeter lead screw. I was able to crack open the, the can of the motor, uh, swap out the rotor and uh, glue it onto the new shaft. And now that has uh, produced a perfectly working uh, lead screw within the stepper motor. And that's gonna be another video, me showing you how to replace the lead screws in those stepper motors. Prior to using the integrated lead screw on the stepper motor uh, on the Z-axis, this is the setup that I previously had. So just a standard NEMA 17 motor with a spring coupler then attached to the 8mm uh, lead screw. And this actually worked quite well with the motor mounted at the base of the frame as opposed to the top of the frame. Uh, these um, spring couplers uh, I guess don't really like to be pulled upon, so when this was at the top of the frame the bed was pulling on the lead screw and causing like a springing action to occur. But mounting this motor at the base of the frame worked absolutely great. The only downside to this, of course, is you're going to lose some Z height with having the coupler in the way. You'll lose about 50 millimeters in height. But before also moving to the integrated lead screw, I mentioned in a previous video about the uh, solid uh, shaft coupler. Well here it is and it's finally arrived and let me attach this to the motor and I'll show you what the outcome is. So here's the solid shaft coupler attached to the shaft of the NEMA 17 motor and the lead screw. I've screwed down the grub screws so it's fully fixed on this motor, they're not coming apart. And if I simply rotate this motor now, have a look at the top of the lead screw, it is wobbling hugely so this particular setup would not have worked at all uh, as a Z-axis drive on the Hypercube 3D printer. So this solid coupler was a bit of a waste of money. I guess I'll put this in the parts drawer with everything else. Check out this print. This is the Cuddling Owls at 50% scale, printed at 0.1 millimeter layer height with Ararum's purple PLA plastic. And look at the resolution on this particular part. All the feathers have come out beautifully. The, the surface uh, on the Z-axis of this is super smooth, super shiny. Now, I've only printed two perimeters in this, so we've got a, a grid infill and only uh, 0 0.8 millimeters of plastic separating the infill from the surface, as you can see, and it's come out bloody nicely. Now, this was printed with the uh, other 
lead screw on the z-axis that I had the one with the spring coupler so this just goes to show if you don't have an integrated lead screw on your z-axis motor it's not the end of the world these are the the, the sorts of prints that you can achieve uh, without the integrated lead screw however with some uh, test cubes that I've printed with this new lead screw that I've installed just this weekend I'm seeing much better z-axis results so this is what you can expect with it with the flexible shaft coupler just wait until uh, I start printing you know, parts like this again with the integrated lead screw. And here's another test print. This is the lighthouse on a rock uh, printed at 70% scale, printed at 0.1 millimeter layer height with Polymaker's uh, PLA Blue, the Poly Plus. And as you can see, it's come out absolutely beautifully as well. Heaps of detail in this particular part. If I scroll up, I just want to show you the tip of the lighthouse because I wasn't expecting all this resolution to actually be uh, present in this piece. But you can see at the top of the lighthouse, you might be able to see the window vanes circling the uh, glass of where the light would shine out. And also the railing around the balcony of this particular lighthouse. You can see uh, the handrail and so on. And it's absolutely beautiful. I wasn't expecting it to come out actually because I've got a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on the E3D hot end. I was expecting a smaller nozzle would produce all that detail, but no, it actually came out in the print. If you're using an end stop micro switch for the Z axis, you can no longer use the existing end stop mount on the frame, nor can you mount the existing Z, Z end stop adjustment on the bed because of this new bed arrangement that we have here. There's physically nowhere to mount this on the bed anymore. So there is a version 1.1 iteration of the micro switch end stop for the Z axis. That's this part here. So this part here clips around the uh, linear guide rail on the right hand side, just like that. And for the end stop adjustment, we have this new piece here, which clips into the bed and sits in just like that, which allows you to adjust the height of this screw on the spring. And you can also then adjust where the end stop clamps on the 8mm linear guide. So this is the new version 1.1 end stop for the new bed configuration. I've purchased a pack of these E3D version 6 silicon socks you can buy from E3D online. They attach around the heat block. Uh, as they're a little bit larger than the heat block, they were obstructing the airflow out of the fan duct. So I've designed a version 1.1 of this fan duct. Uh, which is a little bit shallower. It's it's down a little bit further, a little bit shallower to, to make uh, the air pass underneath the silicon sock. Uh, that version one is also available on the Thingiverse page. Finally, another pack of these M5 T-slot nuts have arrived. That means I can get started on finally mounting the electronics and the power supply to the frame of this 3D printer. Stick around for uh, those new part designs, which I'll be working on over the coming week. You'll see the lengths of 2020 aluminium extrusion on the bed, uh, all the way to the edge of the bed. I've purchased another uh, set from Ararum. I've purchased all my 2020 uh, aluminium from Ararum. If you live in Australia, uh, check them out. They're quite reasonably priced. Uh, they've also sent me another roll to review. This is PETG in silver. Let's check it out. Check out the colour of the silver PETG. It does look like a metallic uh, colour. It's quite, uh, quite glossy as well. So it'll be interesting to, to print with this material to see what a finished part looks like.
completed Aria the Dragon in the silver PETG from Araram. This printed at 0.1mm layer height. It took three and a half hours to complete. But just have a look at the finish on this part. Look at the light glistening off the surface of this particular print. It is absolutely great. Now, this is also showing the first, I guess, detailed print that I'm doing with this new integrated lead screw into the uh, Z-axis stepper motor. And there are absolutely no uh, banding effects that I can see on the surface of this part. I'll take a few high-res photos of this and overlay it on top of the video, but I'm absolutely wrapped with the finish of this particular print. So, if you're after the best quality of Z-axis in your print, definitely go for an integrated uh, lead screw in your Z-axis motor. This may not have been the best piece to showcase Ararum's uh, PETG plastic, but I wanted to see what this particular piece looked like at 0.1mm layer height with the new integrated lead screw. Now with PETG, if any of the uh, infill doesn't stick down while it's printing, uh, it'll uh, kind of ball up and snowball with every layer that gets uh, deposited on top of it to the point where either the hot end will move that that PETG out of the way. And that's what we're seeing here. Because I have the silicon sock on the E3D here, it's not allowing the uh, PETG to, to simply ball up on the uh, nozzle, which is quite common. The silicon sock is preventing that. So the plastic that doesn't get stuck down on the part has to go somewhere. And some of it actually gets deposited to deposited to the perimeter of the part, as we can see just here, or uh, if we're lucky, some of it gets uh, brushed off the part and gets pushed off to the heat bed. As we can see, there's a few flakes of uh, PETG that are on the print bed. But it actually did quite well, and nothing that a hobby knife can't clean up this part with in just a few minutes. In fact, it looks like Aria the Dragon needs a bit of a shave.